I don't know. I do the like. I don't know these things. It's like you're you're like setting me up. You're like alley oop, and I'm like, what game are we playing? <laughs> Welcome back to Nature League. It is the fourth week of the month, and that means that it is time for our special segment called From A to B, where my friend Adrian Adam asks me, Britt Garner, a question about the natural world, life on Earth, all of that good stuff. So this month has been all about communications, the way that different living things communicate with other living things. I would like to know what your question is related to communications. Okay, so sharks are pretty scary. If you see a bunch of sharks in the water, you're not gonna be like, that looks inviting, and just jump on in. That's do no <laughs> so why is it that there's uh, other animals that could be equally dangerous to people right way more dangerous or more dangerous and yet for whatever reason we're like oh look at the hippo uh, it's got a big old butt and hippos are like angry water pigs if anything, for sharks, nobody is like, oh, look at that great white shark. I just want to pinch his little cheeks. There's got to be... Again. There's got to be some kind of way that we can start to interact with sharks the same way that we're able to interact with other animals in the natural world. There's got to be some kind of way to communicate with sharks to make them less scary, to help make ourselves a little bit safer in the water, to send messages to sharks that say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm not good to eat, maybe give me some space, and maybe we'd be able to read sharks better and be like, oh, that shark." It's not going to eat me. He's not all that interested. He's just curious. He wants to see what's up. I think what a little bit of what you might be getting at is this idea of the man-eater, the jaws, the, this big situation, yeah. and that perhaps some form of self-recognition inside of that form might get us to a place of less fear. Yeah, and more understanding. More understanding, right, because any... Understanding is usually from communication. Yeah. Typically, yeah. right? Because, I mean, right now, if I got in the water and a shark started coming at me, I'd be like, I need to get away from that death tube. I think one of the reasons a shark is scarier than, say, the example of, like, a lion, is how divergent in time and both space and habitat that humans are in sharks. Like, we don't even live in the same environment in terms of land versus water, much less have you mentioned fish brain. There's a way, way, way different... Uh, everything going on like what we eat the way that we even see the way that we sense things the how long we've been on earth so like the time frame as well right sharks are from before dinosaurs so wouldn't you say that there's something about sharks being fish being in the ocean that makes that gap even bigger between understanding them uh but then i would point out dolphins but those are mammals so the genus you are uh, no, a uh, little, it'd be a little further back, right? Fish versus mammals, same way with like reptiles versus yeah, mammals. So like that? looking at a snake, a venomous snake versus something else of a similar size, but that is a mammal. I don't know, I feel like there's a larger disconnect because of how far away we are in evolutionary time. So you right? think that that would affect how, we're, how well we're able to communicate? There's just different types of communication that we yes. simply do not engage in as yes. mammals. Our brains are designed to recognize communication this way, this way, and this way. And fish brain doesn't even comprehend that, but our brain doesn't comprehend fish communication. I think there's a possibility there. Sand tigers, which are certain species of shark particularly, we've seen, uh, they've done telemetry studies, which is when you tag and then see where uh, mm -hmm. an individual goes, and seen a lot of um, these kind of like matchups, either like congregating during the summer, breaking apart, coming back, almost as if to be like, Eh, I'm gonna go solo for a while and then being like, actually, but I like to see my friends again. <laughs> and of course, that's anthropomorphizing it. But we do, we that... are seeing, at least in sand tigers and some other species, we are seeing some some social groupings, and that must rely in some part on communicating. Right? Yeah. Like, how do you how do you uh, decide who you're gonna mate with? You know, things like that. I mean, we're talking just like absolute basic level right. reasons to communicate. Sharks must have that too. Well, and they do. Can you think of some? Think about the body plan. Think about what you know about sharks. What piece of them would they or could they use to get a message across? 
their nose. Their boop. Okay. Well, yeah, their booper. So what? Mo moving it around or smelling no, something or well, not smell? Don't they pick up? Uh, I don't know. They've got eyeballs and they've got noses I, and a mouth. What are they doing? Going around being like, ah, Jolene doesn't have a very good complexion this year. <laughs> Think I'll skip over that one. I mean, they're not even in the sun. <laughs> I don't know. I, do the, like, I like, don't know these things. It's like you're you're like setting me up. You're like alley oop, and I'm like, what game are we playing? <laughs> Two things here. You're bringing up sensory senses yeah. versus communication and the two are not totally the same thing because I think that there's ways that we communicate that might be uh, physical or motion related and that doesn't have to do with a shark's ability to sense electro you know, but your electric eyes, though. fields. Sure, like that's where you're receiving it. I'm just saying that it's not a one to one relationship. So, you were mentioning what sharks can do, right? So, they have these really special glands called the ampullae of Lorenzini. It's this very, my new band name. Really? Because I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm questing for on my <laughs> RPG. Ah! <laughs> we're entering this cave to get the ampullae of Lorenzini. Although. <laughs> Yeah, they're like these kind of jelly-filled pores, and that's how sharks figure out uh, they're basically electroreceptors. So sharks are not just getting scent and, and, and vision cues, but actually electricity. So they can tell when a fish is like dying or something is, you know, there's different pulses being given by something that's weakened. The snout does have these amazing features that are letting the shark sense and, and take in its world in a different way than us, right? Mm. But maybe let's think about communication though. Being able to sense electricity would not necessarily be a communication thing because it's not like they're giving out and and then and also receiving. So you don't think two sharks could be swimming along next to each other and one shark turns to the other shark and goes, you know, there's a real spark between us because of electricity. And it's a flailing fish that's just been like between them the whole, <gasps> the whole time. <laughs> oh my god! It's like when you're driving on the highway and there's two semis on either side of you. It's just like no, 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 no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I will let you know that one of the ways sharks at least communicate or interact, right? We don't know if they're literally communicating. We can't ever know. We're not in their heads. But there are a lot of things that a shark can do with its body and the positions of its body. Think about that body plan. So imagine pectoral fins. Those are the ones that are coming out from the side here, just like our pectoral muscles, right? The ones here. And so they can have them down. They can have them a little bit more up. There's also things that the actual, the main chunk of body, the torso can do, right? The there tube. can be the tube. There it is. It can be arched the same way that you see cats do. They do this really interesting thing with their mouths. Uh, we see this in great whites called uh, rapid aerial gaping. <laughs> <laughs> That actually, yeah, yeah, it is. It's in. It's kind of like a open and close kind of a thing. Nang, 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 yeah, nang. all of these we've kind of determined behavioralists uh, looking at shark behavior have said, okay, these are agonistic um, kind of postures. These are like, hey, it's a defense or a get out of my space or like aggression um, type of thing. And so mm. people who have spent a lot of hours diving with sharks have noted these different behaviors, and that has informed them about whether or not they should maybe get out of there or if things are calm. So a lot of that communication is happening. It's just maybe it doesn't look like what you're expecting. But if mm. you pay attention to patterns of behaviors over time, you can get close-ish to, you know, at least some baseline back and forth understanding. But I think that sharks are just so different looking and feeling and sounding, right, from, from us. When there's an arched back, when we see a cat do that, it almost makes a little bit more sense. But to mm -hmm. see a shark do that, it's like, what? Like, what is happening? Yeah. They're yeah. just so different. So what you're saying is there's never going to be a movie where Chris Pratt trains and rides great white sharks. I would never rule that out. And I hate that you even suggested it. <laughs> what? That it suggests that it wouldn't happen? Yeah, because that's happening. Okay. <laughs> just Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Star Lord! Yeah. Whoever I am in Jurassic Park. What are you holding onto on the shark right Rains. now? Rains. But what is your foot doing? Uh, we're leaping out of the water. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <laughs> dumb for not knowing that. You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, communication is a good way, I think, to feel that you have a close relationship to another organism, but communication can take so many different forms that perhaps you're not picking up on it unless you're really spending that time and digging in and seeing those patterns of potential behavior. Mm. And 
you know, we can only get so close. You're thinking hard about something. Gosh, it's uh, nothing in particular. I'm just taking it all in. Aw, love you for it. Thanks for taking it all in with us here on this episode of From A to B for our communications month. Make sure to join us back next week where we are going to start a brand new month. And I am thrilled to say that the theme is oceans. We could have used this one for oceans.